Good evening everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Well you can see the price of the Bitcoin on Mt. Gox. It has been stabilizing. Uh, you can see we ran all the way down to 50 bucks or so on the low after the crash and then uh, rallied promptly to about 130. Quite a bit of volatility. Now we seem to be stabilizing at about 100 now some people will say well we're just going to collapse some more I, I really don't think so I may be wrong uh, but uh, again I've made my predictions they're a matter, matter of public record uh, I predicted that the Bitcoin would break through 40 uh, taking out that all-time high run through 50 and then run to 100 and correct uh, uh, after I saw the strength of the Bitcoin after that correction, I predicted that the Bitcoin would run all the way to 300 uh, before it would correct. So uh, it didn't quite make 300, it made 266, and then we had this catastrophic sell-off. So I feel fairly good about that. those predictions. Now, a lot of people have made a lot of predictions. Most of those have been after the fact, so... Uh, We'll just uh, leave that as it is. So do I think that this point is uh, we're going to stabilize here? Yeah, I think it's going to be here about 75. Uh, either here at 100 or at 75, we're going to start building a base. Go sideways for a while, and then uh, I think the Bitcoin's actually going to make another run. Uh, at the old highs. Now one of the reasons I say that is the market depth. The market depth information is fascinating. Uh, I've been covering that. You can see on the market depth of the uh, bitcoins for sale here is all the way up to 117,000 bitcoins. Now that's significantly larger than the market depth that I had been covering that was running roughly 40 to 50,000 so uh, more than doubled the market depth on uh, the bitcoins for sale but you can see the majority of those coins uh, will say anything above uh, 56 here you can see the majority of those coins are going to be above the 150 level um, now the market depth of the buying is even more important than that you can see here uh, these are broken down in five dollar prices so we'll ignore the the zeros through one because you know you have people who do a bid for a million at a penny so that's irrelevant and we'll ignore five dollars and even ten dollars but if we look here at the fifteen dollars and up you can see that we have two hundred and sixty two thousand worth of bitcoins bid now that is a phenomenal increase and that's consistent with what we've seen being reported by Mt. Gox about a ton of people trying to get in the door. Now I know um, I have a Coinbase account. Uh, the last time I bought Bitcoins, I bought some Bitcoins at 75. Uh, before that, I bought some Bitcoins at 50 on my Coinbase account. Now I went back, actually when we hit 50 here, I was going to go back in and get some more, but I got a message on Coinbase saying our allotment is full, you can buy at some future date, so I just skipped that. Watched the market and and came back and visited that uh, actually tonight's the first time I didn't get that message saying that we filled our allotment so what that message tells me is that there's still a very large number of people who would like to get into the Bitcoin and I think uh, you'll have to go and review my older videos to check the market depth figures but uh, this number here up in 400 and 300,000 that number has expanded massively so there's no reason for me to not believe what Mt. Gox has reported that they've just had an overwhelming number of new accounts that they've been trying to process, trying to catch up with, and uh, that's perfectly consistent with that. So uh, if we get into the closer view here, you can see that there's still some volatility. We corrected down to 92. It looks like we're in a bull move now. It looks like somebody jumped in and picked up 2,000 Bitcoin. So, uh, and then you can see quite a bit of wide swings here earlier with that. So we're still stabilizing. I do think that $100 price is going to be the stabilization point, but we'll just have to wait and see. 
So there were other things I wanted to say about the volume and the action in this chart, but uh, that's going to be covered in a lot of the questions. So I'm just going to jump over to the user questions because some of these uh, go into, into depth fairly deeply. So we'll come back and address uh, some of the volume and uh, some of the uh, price issues when we look at some of these questions. And I apologize for the speed on this form. Uh, I need to do some tweaking. There's a, kind of a slowdown here. So this first question is uh, from the Chevalier. And uh, it's uh, Brother John. Well, Mike Adams sure is gloating. What do you think of his analysis of what caused the crash? And then it goes into that. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have been following what happened with Mike Adams and Alex Jones. Uh, now, it runs the gamut anywhere from uh, conspiracy theory to, uh, you know, singing their praises. And uh, I, I don't really know uh, which way it falls down. I, I, I cannot say that uh, I put a lot of trust in these guys. For me, they're probably a little bit too establishment, and uh, so. But uh, basically, on the face of it, what they said was that they were afraid that uh, they were going to crash the Bitcoin. They were going to use that to demonize it. That seems like a legitimate concern. So, let's get back to the chart and uh, look at that now. One of the reasons I'm going to say that I do not believe that uh, what happened in the Bitcoin was uh, what they were saying is just simply these volume figures. Uh, so we'll look here on the hourly chart and you can see here the initial sell off in the Bitcoin was after a tremendous run up. It was kind of on just fairly steady buying volume. And it wasn't until the technical levels were penetrated that we got uh, s uh, some selling, but not really significant selling, just an increase in selling volume. That's uh, when we got this sell-off. Now, the first thing I would say, if we look at the number of uh, Bitcoins here, we're talking at about 25,000, 15 to 25,000. So if you think about it, uh, 25,000 Bitcoins, uh, that's what two and a, uh, two and a half million dollars at a hundred. So I don't know five million dollars worth of bitcoins, four or five million dollars. So the first question you have to ask yourself is if it's the Federal Reserve, uh, and remember the Federal Reserve is printing of what they've admitted eighty five billion dollars a month, and I'm sure it's much higher than that. Uh, the recent Obama budget has come out and of course it's the same as it's always been uh, they put the cuts off decades or decade or decades it doesn't really matter because they're never going to cut anything but way off into the future and then tax increases now and uh, more growth in the size of government uh, as uh, Jim Puplava pointed out today when the government says we're going to invest what they mean is they're going to grow the size of government so there's no change in uh, the policy of the big government people. Now, Ben Bernanke has been supporting that all the way by buying the government bonds and printing a bunch of money. Uh, no change in that course. So if Ben Bernanke were so threatened by the Bitcoin, which to tell you the truth, my honest opinion really about it is that these people are so arrogant and uh, they are so out of touch with reality that uh, they probably haven't even paid any attention to the Bitcoin. But if it were the case that uh, the Federal Reserve were actually concerned about the Bitcoin at this point, then uh, if I were in charge of the Federal Reserve and I were trying to do what Mike Adams and, and Alex Jones said that the, they may be doing, uh, I certainly would have used more firepower than this. Uh, you could have used billions of dollars and you could have easily run uh, this thin market up to say $5,000 or something a Bitcoin and crashed it down to maybe 10 or $20 with a catastrophic selling collapse. And uh, 
maybe Mt. Gox would halt it, then you just come back in and sell. So based on these volumes and the little tiny dollar amounts traded, I really don't think that uh, there was any involvement by the Federal Reserve or any of the central banks in this. It's just too small for them to even be concerned with it. Now, at some point, it may be uh, something they'd be concerned with, but I think at that point, we're going to be in the thousands on the Bitcoin uh, before they take notice. So let's take another question. Safe and efficient trading platform for Bitcoin. And uh, this one is from widget hi brother john f i've been following your silver youtube channel for the longest time and just registered with the bitcoin channel i'm interested in short term daily or shorter during high volatility trading in and out of bitcoin and i'm hoping to enter into it first time now during after the 12 hour mount gox trading stop in order to take advantage of the current price tip since your faq is not working as of now, and time is of the essence. Uh, that's gonna, always going to be a red flag if you're trading. Uh, time is never of the essence. So if you're rushing, you're probably going to rush into losing money. Meaning I cannot catch up with all the past Bitcoin reports right now. I would be grateful if you could post a quick advice for what I'm looking for. A platform allowing moving in and out fairly quickly without large exchange fees. The move out could be to any other relatively stable asset. An offline or other storage that is not susceptible to online wallet attacks or hacks allowing me to retain full ownership. That is, avoiding getting my BTC frozen on the exchange due to exchange instability like Mt. Gox, at least outside the time whilst the trade is being processed. Sourcing the initial funds from PayPal via some other source, I assume. Access to technical indicators. Ability to trade using stops. Partial anonymity would be a plus. Do not want to be totally dependent on Mt. Gox, as I see them in the first line targeted by governments. Must be able to exit to a non-virtual currency somehow if needed. PayPal is okay. Please let me know what sites and services you see would fulfill these requirements, or as many of them as possible. The entry is most uh, the entry is the most time critical right now, but exit may prove to be just as critical in the near future. Haha. -ha. List of services which the requirement they uh, catch would do just fine. Thank you for your great work in silver and Bitcoin. So, well, if that's what you want, I would suggest that you start it. Or I would suggest that you reach out to uh, some people who are in uh, the venture capital field because we really don't have it. And uh, Max Kaiser and myself have been asking for it. Uh, I think we're going to see it, uh, especially if the Bitcoin stabilizes and uh, we get a fairly uh, consistent trading around this 100 price and stability, then I think after it's been demonstrated, you're going to see a lot of venture capital come in because there's no question that all of these things are needed. Um, Mt. Gox has a lot of flaws. Uh, BTC-E has a lot of flaws. Uh, Vercurex has a lot of flaws. Those are the three uh, exchanges, if you want to call them that, that I use. Um, but they leave a lot to be desired. So I don't have any doubt in my mind right now that there are people who are making these things happen right now. There's a tremendous profit to be made uh, from the trading in the Bitcoin. There's an enormous interest of people ready to come online and uh, just even if just to buy one Bitcoin. Uh, now, I personally, as I've said before, I do not trade the Bitcoin. I had plenty of opportunities uh, to sell my Bitcoins at uh, 250 or so. I didn't even consider it. I was thinking we may be nearing the top. As you know, I predicted that we'd hit about 300, but uh, I would never sell my Bitcoins for dollars. I have no intent from this point on to sell any Bitcoins for dollars. Now, I did exit my Bitcoin position in my trading book, and uh, that is where I uh, began to exit out at 150 and higher and uh, switched into Litecoins. Now, it hasn't really played out that well, um, 
the Litecoin is rallying a little bit now. I have some name coins, some other coins. But again, I really didn't have any choice because I'm not willing to trade back into dollars and uh, involve myself with any type of uh, tax uh, implications regarding capital gains taxes. So for me, it's a matter of accumulating Bitcoins and uh, getting involved in that. Now, as far as an exchange that allows you to trade back into could be gold or silver, that's definitely another idea that could be a big, big deal. Um, uh, there's there's just many ideas here PayPal as far as I know they've completely frozen out the Bitcoin uh, they just uh, they're not willing to get involved uh, some say it's a big conspiracy but I think their explanation is fairly decent they're not interested in getting in, in involved in the disputes uh, t as far as technical indicators they're very very limited um, I've had to actually draw lines directly into my paint program off of Clark Moody because uh, there are some on Bitcoin charts, but uh, again, uh, and I have Sierra charts as well, but as far as uh, really sophisticated things like you have in stocks and futures, there's just nothing like that in the Bitcoin. This is just a little tiny baby market. now using trading stops I know they had those on Vercurex I believe they removed those uh, you can use stops as far as if you want to trade uh, below the market if you're buying or above the market if you're selling uh, but as far as uh, to have a sell protection stop so that the market falls into your price and you sell out that that's not available uh, partial anonymity well again if you're buying and selling for dollars uh, you're not going to be able to have anonymity because FinCEN has already said that uh, if it's involved with dollars it's going to be considered a money services business it's going to have to uh, uh, comply with the know your customer rule and uh, Mt. Gox is clearly compliant with that so if you're talking about buying and selling bitcoins for dollars you're not going to have that anonymity uh, unless perhaps you're outside of US jurisdiction um, again uh, Mt. Gox could be targeted by governments uh, that anything could be targeted by governments and uh, must be able to exit to a non virtual currency somehow if needed PayPal is okay so a lot of this stuff I agree would be great to have I think we'll see it in the future but uh, it doesn't exist right now. Again, uh, we're just in the infancy of this currency, uh, but I really do believe that there are probably a large number of venture capitalists who are probably bringing these things online right now. So we just kind of have to wait and see who's going to do what, and I really don't know. I know there's a lot of really big mines involved in this, but I don't really know if there's a lot of big money involved in it. So getting back to the chart, uh, it's actually very encouraging. If we look at the volume figures, as I pointed out earlier, the initial sell-off was actually on fairly light volume. That was just a technical sell-off uh, as where... Uh, more than anything else people just simply pulled their bids so you can have a sell-off on very light volume if there's no buyers uh, likewise you can have a rally on very light volume if there's no sellers so this does not appear to me to be a sell-off based upon someone trying to crash the market now that might have been the case right here someone might have tried to crack it but you can see that with the candlestick spike that we got, they met a lot of uh, very serious buyers. Now this volume spike here, this one is all the way up to 70,000 Bitcoins uh, or more. And that was when we hit 50. And you can see that bought a, uh, brought a lot of buying interest into the market. And that was followed up by a significant rally all the way to 130 that was... Uh, mostly buyers uh, since that point in time we've had some sellers dribbling off we have a very nice buy spike 
that is the basis of the current rally. So based on all of those factors, I am going to predict that uh, the base point for the Bitcoin now is going to be 100. And if we look at all the FUD, all of the attacks, all of the mainstream media, and of course, the prostitutes of the mainstream media were waiting for this uh, crash. And again, uh, everyone was predicting this. This is not a surprise. I was predicting it. Everyone was predicting it. I actually gave my price targets, but it was clear to everyone when you see a parabolic spike, you're going to get a correction in that. So that was not a shock to anyone. Uh, it may have been a shock to the people who were buying here at 210, but uh, yes, probably some greed entered the market. But uh, my suspicion is that the vast majority of the people who were buying uh, all the way up here, the vast majority of those people, I would say probably 85 to 95 percent of those people still have the Bitcoins that they purchased. They were just people interested in getting into the game and by the market depth figures that we're seeing here, I think that there's still a large number of people trying to get into the game. Uh, I'm going to probably look for $150 uh, to be the next price target we're looking for. Now, if we can get above that $150 mark, uh, and I don't know how long that's going to take, but that may take some time as we slowly build. But if we can get above that, we may see another sharp rally to attack those old highs. I definitely don't believe that this bull market is over. Very clearly, the fact that we broke through 40 and 50, ran straight to 100, then ran up to 266, and now we're stabilizing at 100, tells me that we're still in a bull market. And we'll talk to you next time.